Good morning. On behalf of the University of Guelph, we thank you for joining us as we celebrate the life of William C. William C. Weingard. As you can tell, he's a special man to me. A life well lived. Bill Weingard was our second president and played an integral role in laying the foundation of Guelph. He was our historian and would want us to acknowledge that this campus, which he took such care in, resides on the ancestral lands of the people and the treaty lands of the people. Relationship and community were very important to Bill, and his values aligned with the dish one spoon. 
he would encourage us to enter into relationship with our Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Métis neighbors, spirit, friendship, peace, and respect. As you know, Dr. Weingard was a passionate Canadian. He served his country with pride, both in the Navy and in Parliament. We would like to sing the national anthem right now with the same joy and enthusiasm that Bill always displayed. So if you are able, please stand for our national anthem. Normally, at a university function such as this, we introduce our dignitaries. Not surprising, given Bill's leadership, that's impossible to do. He was involved in so many arenas, there are too many people here to single out individually. But I would like to note that in the audience, we have first and foremost members of Bill's family. Thank you for coming. We have politicians, past and present, municipal, provincial, and federal. We have current and past university administrators, some who've come from quite a distance. We have honorary fellows, retired, current, and present members of faculty, staff. We have alumni, donors, many friends. But I can hear him saying to me, Brenda, don't forget the student. Don't forget the young people. So we have lots of young people here. And he stressed that our primary role is to educate students and to start that education early. So we're pleased that you could be here. The diversity of the audience represents the depth of connections that Dr. Weingard had in this community. We will have a few people who were impacted by Bill's speak, but first I ask that you turn your attention to the screen as we reflect on Bill's life. I grew up in a household with very, very little money. I grew up in a household whatever we with had. very, very little money. Half a loaf of bread. Whatever we had. Uh, my mother so would feel half a loaf of bread or something to make sure that other people. Uh, my mother would feel it's necessary bread. to make sure that other people so, uh, had some bread. I just grew up thinking that was what you did. You and so others. I just grew up thinking that was what you did. You helped others. father owned the business, right? He was a mechanic. Uh, that, uh, that, it all sounds so fascinating. The concept of all these failures in metals that I had lived as a kid, hear my dad talking about, then uh, no, I think I'd like to try that. Of course, I went directly from Caledonia High School into the Navy when I was 17. And I spent three and a half years in the Canadian Navy, all during the war. But I was a coder for three years or so, and then I uh, promoted to officer rank. Of 
course, some places it was difficult. But if you're at sea in the North Atlantic in a storm, then that, that's hell. And it, it's just absolutely terrible. And then in the back of my mind always was at some point, at some point, I'm going to get to university. It'll be over someday. I'm going to get to university. Then uh, I went to the University of Toronto to do my degree. Finally ended up doing a doctorate degree, PhD at, at Toronto. And then um, stayed at Toronto for quite a while as a professor. And then one day they asked me if I'd like to come to Guelph as a the president. And uh, that was such a shock. And when I spent eight years as the president of the university, all very exciting years, because we were growing, we were changing the focus of the institution in many places. And uh, so I, I was quite quite happy with uh, the eight years that I spent here. Whether anybody else was, not, I'm not sure, but I was. And when I walked on the, not one, not one I'd walk up past the residences, I'd go into the residences, you know, pretty every couple of times a week, shoot the breeze and talk. A couple of those students came to me and said, did you really mean all that stuff? You sat down and listened to the book, you know, doing your duty and, helping people and I said, yeah well we have an idea we'd like you to run for parliament when I came back on a Sunday afternoon they had assembled 200 people and then with, with you know, sort of fire in their eyes uh, you got you now I said wow okay I said I'd do it and we will my dad lived long enough for me to be a, a, a member of parliament, which uh, I think he, he enjoyed. He enjoyed it probably more than I did. <laughs> Someone asked me about two weeks ago, what was the best job you ever had? I had no hesitation in saying a professor. Could, what, what could be better? You watch young men and women grow as you're with them day by day in the class and sometimes out of class. I read to, look to kindergarten kids every week and uh, I love it when they start to ask questions. Then I know that I'm there for a purpose. I don't, that's not the purpose for I'm reading. I'm reading because I love it. But when I see the kids beginning to ask questions, then I know, hey, that's, that's been a successful period. And a uh, great fun, of course. Then they come up with the darndest questions. And the thing that I always carry around in the back of my mind, that I am my brother's keeper. And if any of us fail to understand that, we have lost the whole basis of humanity. So nothing in, inherently important about being Bill Lungard. Do what's right. Be kind, generous, yeah, that was a, I try to live by that. Well, I don't think it's complete, I'm not sure that it, it ever is, because there's always something more that you could do and that you think about, uh, why didn't I do that? So, you know, but I, uh, generally speaking, I'm content with the fact that I've been able to, you know, help a lot of people do some good in the world. And, uh, and, and I feel quite content about that. Well, welcome everyone. My name is Franco Vaccarino and I have the great honor and privilege of serving as the President and Vice Chancellor here at the University. What a great day uh, to uh, pay our respects and remember Bill Weingard. 
I was, uh, as I was coming in today, I listened to the, the weather report, and it's calling for a high of 16 and maybe even higher, warmest uh, day of the year. And I thought, how fitting is that uh, to welcome the spring in uh, with that weather report at, and, and today's event. So welcome to today's tribute for Dr. William Weingart, a respected educator, administrator, engineer and scientist, federal politician, veteran, and a gentleman. As the university's second president and vice chancellor, <clears throat> Dr. Weingart played a pivotal role in leading the University of Guelph to become the forward-looking and respected institution that it is today. He really did embody the values that still very much guide us today. Excellence, community, engagement, and integrity. Dr. Weingart was a wise and compassionate, compassionate presence whose legacy lives on in many ways here on campus as well as in the wider community. And on a personal note, I have to say how deeply honored I am to hold the same office here at the University of Guelph, and I would like to welcome and acknowledge past presidents that are here with us today, Alistair Summerlee and Mordecai Rosansky, uh, for joining us uh, today. Great to have you uh, here. Bill stayed close to the university right up until his, his later years, and I had the honor and privilege of getting to know Bill and be the recipient of his frequent expressions of encouragement and support, which I have to say were particularly important uh, in my own early years here at the University of Guelph. And throughout all our interactions, what stood out for me was his very special and unique combination, this interesting balance, of a focused sense of leadership and responsibility on the one hand, and his huge spirit of kindness and generosity. Now, years after his tenure as president and vice chancellor between 1967 and 1975, we continue to very much feel his presence here on campus in so many ways. And this amazing and heartfelt gathering today is a, is a testament to exactly that, feeling his presence. William or Bill Weingard arrived in Guelph from the University of Toronto, as we heard, in our centennial year, 1967. That fall, there were just over 4,600 students enrolled here at the University of Guelph. Fast forward to today, 50 years, a little over 50 years later, and we have roughly 30,000 students enrolled. The university was smaller in 1967, but it was ambitious. And so was its new leader. Early the following year, Dr. Weingart appeared on the cover of the inaugural issue of the University Alumni Magazine, photographed in front of a of nearly, um, of nearly completed McLaughlin Library, along with the headline, New Vista, New President. The late 60s, as, as we all know, were a time of great growth and renewal for the university. And one of the most visible reminders of Dr. Weingart's tenure is, of course, Weingart Walk the main pedestrian spine that runs through the heart of the campus and that is named for the president who made, who made it his regular route between home and the office. It's also, as we think about Weingard Walk, I think it's also an apt metaphor. Dr. Weingard's legacy runs through many of, our, uh, many of the institution and the values that continue to shape and to guide us today. He helped build a university that honored its roots, its roots in agriculture, its, its roots in veterinary, sciences and domestic sciences within a comprehensive university with exciting and transformative new and emerging directions of pedagogy and research. Dr. Weingart and other early builders laid the groundwork and built the foundation for what today is recognized nationally and internationally as a top-ranked comprehensive research intensive institution committed to improving life. In that inaugural issue of the Alumni Magazine, Dr. Weingart stated his conviction that the university, need, university needed to look for opportunities to harness knowledge to make a difference, not just at home, but out in the wider world. And today we continue to do just that by looking for ways to turn knowledge into action and to embrace internationalism, to expand our rings of impact, something that was so important to build. Among other initiatives here on campus, Dr. Weingart helped lead the reorganization of college status on campus, gave students a voice on our governing, uh, on our governing policies, and open, opened Senate meetings to the public. 
He set a tone of collegiality on campus and nurtured a culture of engagement that continues to this day. And I would suggest that that feature of our university, that culture of engagement um, that, that Dr. Weingart so much nurtured, uh, is a very special feature that stands out, st that stands out for the University of Guelph within the context of the broader post-secondary landscape. Who knows how many people he stopped to talk to along the, that namesake walkway, including many people still working on the campus today. Now, long after his time as president, Dr. Weingart continued to contribute to this campus and was particularly fond, as we saw, of reading to children at the university's child care and learning center. And I visited uh, those sessions uh, a, a few times, uh, very heartwarming and powerful experiences. And his own passion for learning and commitment to excellence to live on at the University of Guelph through the Weingart Medal, our top convocation award, as well the University of Guelph hosts annual visiting lectures, lectureships established in Dr. Weingart's name in international development, engineering, and physics. And then, of course, there was his political career. Having arrived here at the age of 43, by the time Bill retired as president eight years later, he wasn't ready, really, for full retirement. Instead, he found a new career in federal politics as a member of parliament for Guelph and Guelph Wellington. First elected in 1984, he served as parliamentary, sec parliamentary secretary to the Minister of International Trade and the Minister of State, which included science and technology, before becoming Canada's first Minister of Science from 1990 to 1993. And um, uh, Michael Wilson, who passed away, sadly, uh, uh, not too long ago, of course, was Minister of Finance uh, during that period, and I knew Michael well, and we exchanged stories uh, um, months ago, I remember, before uh, Michael passed on, uh, about the huge, um, huge contributions that Dr. Weingart uh, made. While an MP, Dr. Weingart served as a voice for his home community in Ottawa and helped advance international education and development research for the entire country. The University of Guelph recognized Dr. Weingart's contributions with an honorary degree, as well as the Lincoln Alexander Medal of Distinguished Service and the Lincoln, Lincoln Alexander Outstanding Leader Award. In conferring those honors, we celebrate, celebrated Dr. Will, William Weingart, one of the founding and most influential leaders of the University of Guelph. And now what I'd like to do is introduce Dr. Jim Stevens, a university professor emeritus here on campus and a longtime friend and colleague of Dr. Weingart's. I will say that Dr. Stevens arrived here in 1957 as a physics professor, well in time to witness the official establishment of the university in 1964, as well as Dr. Weingart's arrival. Thanks very much. Well, it's an honor for me to be able to tell you a little bit about my friend, Bill Weingard. In 1957, I was teaching a, a, a lab course in physics at the University of Toronto. I had two metallurgy students in my class, and they were Bill Weingard's students. Through those students, I got to meet and know Bill. Um, and also, through those students, I found out that he was absolutely superb teacher. Ten years later, as he and Elizabeth arrived at, at Guelph, he was a, a recognized scholar. He had over a, a hundred publications. His 1962 book on the solidification of metals was uh, frequently and internationally cited. The last uh, citation I found was in 2000, it was a recent ago as 2007. It, the, uh, his, uh, when he arrived here, he wanted to, to give all the faculty and staff an opportunity to meet him. And so he set up a reception line between Creelman and Johnson Hall. And, and uh, Elizabeth and Bill were at the head, and then senior administrative officers and their wives followed. Now, I can't remember whether there's some kind of a block times set up, or, but it doesn't matter. Everybody was invited to meet him. Bill wanted to in, encourage a collegial uh, environment. 
So he and Elizabeth invited all the faculty and staff and their partners to come to dinner at the president's house and mixing and intermixing dis disciplines and mixing in those with uh, administrative and, uh, and service responsibilities. Bill's, uh, as already been said, Bill's main focus was students. And very early in his presidency, he uh, arranged for students to become elected to the Senate. He also arranged for them to be placed on very important reporting committees. He, uh, 1967 to 1972 was a very busy time for the university. The Senate, with was the responsibility for academic programs, was busy with changes in existing programs probably brought about by the new university status, and also, of course, the increased interest in arts and, and, and social science. Um, the construction, no, the uh, uh, Committee on Academic Administrative Organization had reported and recommended a college school system for the university. Um, the uh, McKinnon Arts Building and uh, the uh, Crop Science Building and the McLaughlin Library construction had started the year before uh, Bill arrived. Uh, and to, to continue the theme of the founding colleges, that students should have, be able to have uh, uh, experience of living in residence, uh, the 1,662 bed South Residences construction had also begun. Following that, there was uh, the McNaughton Building, the University Center, and uh, the Thornburg Building, and Alumni Stadium. Now, one would think that the bill was up to his neck in, in university business, but no, here you find him just sauntering solely into a department, see how things are, into the residence, see how things are, uh, taking time off to learn how to milk a cow so he can compete in College Royal, uh, he, uh, or just taking a little longer on his walk from home to, to, to his office, or going out for an early morning skate in the pygmy arena. Bill just loved Left the state. Bill had an academic appointment in the Department of Physics. Uh, and there he set up his research. He had a postdoc and a, and a, a graduate student that left over from Toronto. Uh, he and I team taught a first year physics course. Uh, and uh, um, since he, he always brought this. Uh, signature prop that he had. This was a, a raft of ping pong balls glued together. There were three of these. The balls represented metal ions, and, and the glue, of course, the, the charges that held the, these, the, these metal ions together. And he passed these things around the class, and you could move them around and see what kind of arrangements these, these, uh, the atoms could have in a solid. Obviously, with Bill's metallurgy background, we had to change the course outline a bit. Uh, those worked very well. Matter of fact, we published a paper uh, on our experience, and it was entitled Positrons and Electrons, giving students the opportunity to get a charge out of physics. Bill uh, loved to collect Canadian art. Uh, he and Elizabeth take a break, would, would uh, travel to Toronto twice yearly to visit the art auctions down there of Canadian art, put on by Sotheby's. My wife at the time, Carol, and I often accompanied, accompanied them. Now, Bill's life as president wasn't always fantastically smooth. He had to deal with student sit-ins, 
he had to deal with a, a strike of cleric, a unionized clerical workers. And he had to deal with a, a, a 60s motivated grouping of a renegade professor in sociology, and a bunch of students were following him. But the strike was the thing that, that bothered him the most. The strike was because the university was using an outdated civil service pay scale. And uh, Bill just didn't have the funds to deal and try to correct it, try to correct this. I can't remember how it was finally resolved, followed by arbitration. In any event, there were many very unkind things said about him. And that hurt him a lot, given his well-known concern for, for his uh, university people. I wrote a very long letter to the editor, which was published in the Mercury, which he appreciated. Um, then, as, as uh, Franco has said, he was given an opportunity to run for parliament. Uh, a group of us got together, independent of our political interests, and, and became Bill Weingard Progressive Conservatives. Progressive as opposed to the Americanized version. He, uh, as you know, he was elected, and, and Frank was told you about, about his experience in Ottawa. Now, before he was, as he was elected, uh, he, he and Elizabeth lived in Halton Hills, out on the escarpment. And he expressed to me the wish to be closer to wealth. So, so I sold him 15 acres land on Stone Road, just uh, east of, of Watson. And there he and Elizabeth built his, his new home and planted lots of trees and got ready to garden. Both Bill and Elizabeth loved to garden, and I had a manure pile to help them be successful. Uh, they wanted to see the wide area of, 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 the, of the land, the, the grass. But their problem was it, that it, piece of, that, that part was very stony. And I can remember that Elizabeth spent hours and hours and hours picking up stones and, and trying to get them the, the, the land prepared so that you could mow the land with lawnmower and not break the lawnmower. Just about that time, three of my fat heifers got, got out. And I was, uh, I remember standing uh, on Stone Road, and Bill came out and he said, can I, can I be of some help? Yeah, sure, come on. You stand, you stand here, at the top of this Gordon Hill, and uh, I have something else to do. And if these heifers come up the hill, uh, then don't let them go by. <laughs> I, I, uh, how do I do that, he asked. Uh, I said, well, just wave your arms and yell. Well, well, well they never came up, so that, that was good. Well, at this time, Elizabeth was, became burdened with uh, uh, muscular uh, porosis. And she asked Bill if he would hire Margaret Vandeva as her caregiver, given the experience of the, with the caregivers that the agency provided. Uh, Margaret had been one of those caregivers, and Elizabeth liked her the most. Elizabeth brought her little grandson, Emerson, who became endeared to Elizabeth. Margaret brought her little grandson, Emerson, endeared to Elizabeth. Um, during Elizabeth's illness, their daughter, Catherine, passed away. And that coupled with the earlier death of a granddaughter, Lane, was just much more than anybody could, could understand in, in the effect on, on the Weingart. 
Uh, Elizabeth made Bill promise that he would keep Margaret until she finished her BA. And then after that, he needed a, a caregiver. So, now, uh, as you know, Bill served some time in the Canadian Navy. And he, he became deeply uh, affected by the sea. He, uh, in the last nine or ten years of his life, he traveled to the East Coast, visited some place in Newfoundland or, or, or the Maritimes. But he always came to back to the harbor and uh, uh, visited uh, the corvette that was moored there, which was the sister corvette, to the Saskatoon on, on which he served. He, he met the captain and had some wonderful chat conversation. Now, Bill always had his hair cut at uh, Franco's on Wellington Street. Uh, those Canadian Italian barbers just loved Bill. Well, who didn't? Thank you, Franco and Jim. So when I started as a student here many years ago, I knew the name because I walked down Weingard Walk all the time. And I knew he was this old president, and for me, old was what it was. I was a young, youngster then. But I didn't really know much more about that. And it wasn't until later in my career that I had the privilege to get to meet Bill Weingard. As Franco mentioned, he was very generous of his time with senior administrators, providing great mentorship. And I was struck by his clarity of purpose about student learning and engagement. It was powerful. He challenged me to remember that every student mattered and that our job was to help them to become individuals who would make a positive difference in the world. And I began to understand how this university evolved into becoming the university that was known as one committed to students and to making a difference. He left a mark much greater than buildings and programs. It's also not surprising that many of the awards that are in his name focus not only on excellence in scholarship, but also impact. And we are asking Tim Mao today, one of the Weingard Medal winners, to speak. Tim, Professor Tim Mao, I still think of him as little Tim. Uh, you'll, you'll see that's not true. Um, he was a Weingard recipient in 1993 of the Weingard Medal, the top award for graduating undergraduate student in excellence in scholarship and impact leadership. He was also the recipient of the Weingard Assembly Volunteer Medal in 2008. Tim. Thank you very much, Brenda. Uh, it's certainly a great honor for me to be here uh, today and, and have been asked to say a few words about the Honorable William Weingard uh, and the impact that he has had on this community. Uh, I must say that the task is certainly a bit daunting. How does one adequately pay a tribute to a man who is seldom held in such high esteem in this community for a lifetime of service and accomplishment uh, and to do so in under four minutes? I fear that the task is impossible. Nonetheless, over the next few minutes, I will endeavor to impart a small sense of what this remarkable man has meant to both me and to the city of Guelph. I still remember the first time that I met Dr. Weingard. It was the fall of 1988. I was a wide-eyed 19-year-old freshman recipient of a President's Scholarship, which were first awarded only the year before, uh, presumably to honor, at least in part, the leadership of Dr. Weingard uh, that he had provided to this institution between 1967 and 1975, and I was attending a reception at what was then known as the Faculty Club on the fifth floor of the University Center. Uh, it was a celebration in honor of the newest cohort of presidential scholars, uh, 
and the room was filled with the usual university dignitaries, including the former president, who at that time would have been in the early days of his second term as a member of parliament for Guelph and Wellington. I can't remember exactly what was said at my inaugural encounter with the larger-than-life former university president, but I do vividly remember the excitement and the anticipation that I felt as I met him. After all, this was the man whose walkway through the heart of campus I had navigated many a time over the course of the preceding year while I was completing high school at Centennial Collegiate Vocational Institute and practicing uh, with the University of Guelph men's basketball team. There is perhaps no more iconic space on the University of Guelph campus than Weingard Walk. Moreover, I had just embarked on my undergraduate studies in political science and had ambitions of running for political office one day. So the prospect of meeting a member of parliament, even if it was from that other party, was a cherished moment. In that brief interaction, I formulated a lasting impression of Dr. Weingard. While he was fairly small in stature, but I suppose that most people are when you're standing next to a person who's six foot eight, he possessed a jovial and charismatic personality. He was clearly passionate about a number of causes. Uh, when he spoke, he commanded the attention of everyone in the room. People listened when Bill spoke. What struck me the most, however, was that he was, as, uh, that he was uh, generous and welcoming in a way that I had not quite anticipated for a man of his standing. In the many subsequent interactions that I've had with Bill over the past 30 years, I witnessed that same warm, generous spirit time and time again. In 2015, for example, I had the opportunity to mentor an undergraduate student in the Department of Political Science who had hoped to one day run for the Conservative Party. Naturally, I suggested that she meet Dr. Weingard, and I, when I broached the matter with him, he enthusiastically agreed to do so. As per his suggestion, I took Kayla to a Rotary meeting one Friday, and we sat with Bill over lunch to talk about uh, his uh, time in politics while he quizzed her about her future aspirations. Kayla was thrilled. If that were not enough, at the conclusion of our lunch meeting, Bill extended a personal invitation to attend the forthcoming public event by his former colleague, the Right Honorable Joe Clark, who was scheduled to deliver the Weingard Lecture in International Development, and then to join him afterwards as his guest at a private rece reception uh, that was uh, held in, in uh, Joe Clark's honor. That was Bill, always thoughtful and generous. Bill spent his entire life providing servant leadership, whether it was serving his country as the youngest officer in the history of the Royal Canadian Navy during the Second World War, serving as the president of this institution shortly after its creation, or serving the residents of Guelph and Wellington, uh, and the citizens of this country more broadly as a member of parliament and a cabinet minister. For that reason, it was apt when Bill joined the Rotary Club of Guelph an international service club whose motto is service above self in 1994, shortly after he had retired from politics. It was a fitting way for Bill to continue to serve his community, uh, and we would be hard pressed to find a better exemplar of that ideal than the Honorable William C. Weingard. Assuredly, Bill served the community in many high profile ways. It is difficult, for example, to think of a major fundraising campaign in Guelph. Uh, over the past several decades that Bill was not involved with in some way, shape, or form, either as an honorary chair or, more than likely, as an active member of the campaign cabinet, actively out there in the community soliciting donations from individuals and corporations for a very worthy cause. The capital campaign for Hospice Wellington, uh, recent capital campaigns for our hospitals, uh, and more recently, his personal quest to bring a second John McRae memorial statue to Guelph in 2015 to complement the one that was erected in Ottawa at the military monument site near the parliament buildings uh, immediately come to mind. However, Bill served the community quietly in so many other ways, and that is how I will remember him the most. 
whether it was taking the time to read books to school children in Guelph, to lend his voice at the Remembrance Day celebrations at our Rotary Club or in the city at large, or serving on a number of committees uh, of our Rotary Club, Bill was always finding ways to serve others and to contribute to the betterment of this community. It is fitting, therefore, that the United Way, Guelph, Wellington, and Dufferin, the Volunteer Centre of Guelph, Wellington, and the University of Guelph partnered to establish the Dr. Dr. William Weingard Exemplary Volunteer Involvement Award in 2007 in order to recognize the efforts of a staff member, faculty member, and student who have volunteered in the community. Uh, and as Brenda said, I was very honored uh, to have been one of the earlier recipients of that award back in 2008. When I attended that January meeting of the Rotary Club of Guelph, where many a time over nearly two decades I had the opportunity to share a meal with Bill, I learned that he was in hospital with pneumonia. I had a premonition that there would be no further opportunities to share in fellowship with this very special individual who was loved by all. My worst fear was realized when a couple of short weeks later, news of his passing had spread throughout the community. While the passing of William C. Weingard, Guelph lost one of its great community leaders. However, we can take solace in the fact that the Weingard name, one that is associated with excellence, and more importantly, at least to my mind, a formidable legacy of upholding the rotary ideal of service above self, will live on. Bill, you left a mark on this institution and the city of Guelph that will never be forgotten. I'm Kurt McQueen. I'm principal at William C. Weingard Public School. Thank you to the University of Guelph for the invitation today. Everyone knows Bill's passion for, was education. Our participation this morning draws a link between elementary and post-secondary education, which we, he would have definitely appreciated. Dr. Weingard's direct involvement with life at William C. Weingard Public School over the past five years had a tangible and lasting impact on hundreds of people, students, staff, and parents. And I can proudly say we provided a pretty darn good second home for, for him from age 90 to 94. He loved it there. At our school, Mrs. Barber's homeroom class hosted a diversity day this past February to celebrate the fact that they can make a difference in their classroom community and their interactions with people in general through inclusion, respect, acceptance, and understanding. Dr. Weingard modeled all of these qualities and placed great importance on identity, especially as a Canadian veteran, and on supporting one's community as exemplified through his own acts of service to society. He attended our Diversity Day last year, saying that he'd probably stay, oh, just about an hour. He enjoyed himself so much. He stayed for the entire event. Unfortunately, these grade 8 students didn't get to share their special day with him this year, but they wrote and performed an original song to honor acceptance, respect, identity, and global awareness, in addition to paying tribute to our namesake, Dr. Weingard. They're going to perform it here for you today.
good? All right. <clears throat> Here we stand, proud yet sad. He is the heart of William Weingart School. He looked out for the city of Guelph, taught us love, taught us pride. We remember together as a group, Dr. Weingart let our pack. Playing, sorry. <laughs> sorry, my bad. Okay. Compassion, community, naval man, and now memory, heart of vow, school family. His energy belongs to you and me, everyone in harmony, a man of. Positivity, we embrace his responsibility. We are, we are, we are his legacy. We are, we are, we are his legacy. On the sea, education was his fantasy. We are forever grateful that our destiny was a sharp dressed man of such humanity we are 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 we
are, we are his legacy. We are, we are, we are his legacy. Here we stand, proud yet side. Here's the heart of William. One yard school, he looked out for the city of wealth. Taught us love, taught us pride, we remember together as a group. Dr. Weingart led our back, Dr. Weingart led our back, Dr. Weingart led our back. We are, we are, we are his legacy. We are, we are, we are his legacy. We are. We are, we are his legacy. That's really all we had to do. <laughs> I just think it's so cool that the Weingard name is on all of your uh, sweatshirts. Uh, talk about a legacy. Um, thank you so much. I can't imagine a celebration of Bill's life without music, and we are so blessed to have music here today, and uh, very blessed to have music from young people. So uh, thank you very much for singing a song that was so consistent with his values. So um, if maybe one more time we could say thank you. As we know, Bill loved young people, and he would light up whenever he spoke about, about young people. Um, one of my strongest memories was very similar to Tim's when I asked him if he would come the day before Remembrance Day to speak to our Rotaract Club at the University of Guelph to talk about um, Remembrance Day. And as his way, he generously agreed to give of his time. Um, he captivated those students. And, you know, I, I reflect on Jim's comment about what a great teacher he was. He was such an extraordinary teacher and you know the students were kind of thinking oh I could listen to this old guy talk about Remembrance Day Brenda's making us come and they wouldn't leave you know they stayed afterwards and similar he met with one of those students afterwards to talk uh, in more detail um, he was very um, passionate about veteran affairs and us remembering and Remembrance Day and at those events he would speak to the importance of music uh, music was very important to him um, and so it's a playing an important role in our, ce our celebration today. We're so blessed to have uh, our young singers here, and also Marta McCarthy and the University of Guelph uh, Choir to provide music today. Uh, please let's take a moment, you're going to hear the sing, take a moment to thank the choir for singing as well. As Marta said, we could not have a song without a Navy hymn. We couldn't celebrate without a Navy hymn. So today the choir is going to be singing Eternal Father Strong to Save, which was a favorite of Bill's. Following this hymn, Chris Patterson will play the last post as a final farewell to a good soldier, noting that he can rest in peace. This will then be followed by a moment of silence and then the reveille. If you are able, please stand for the hymn and post.
I 
ask that you turn your attention to the screen for a message from Bill's granddaughter, Bryn Weingard, who is an adjunct professor for the newly named school, uh, Gordon S. Lang School of Business and Economics. As Bill says, we must continue to evolve. Hi, everybody. I'm Dr. Bryn Weingard. I am the Honorable William Charles Weingard's youngest granddaughter and, in fact, uh, adjunct professor here at the University of Guelph in the College of Business and Economics. I come to you from Los Angeles, California. I am so sorry that I couldn't be there today, but I did want to send a note of hello and of thank you uh, from myself, certainly, as faculty, and then, of course, from us, the Weingart family. You know, University of Guelph was a very special place in Grandpa's heart. Uh, he really loved being a professor and, first and foremost, an educator. Uh, you know, he did his university degree, his, his doctoral degree in metallurgical engineering at the University of Toronto and soon came to the University of Guelph at what he always described as a very exciting time for that university, for all of, you know, everything you see around you. It was a young university. I don't even know if it had yet become named a university, um, but he saw opportunity to really help build it into, um, you know, into something great. Uh, and, and of course, you know, those reigns have been taken long ago and built into what you see around you. But, uh, you know, University of Guelph is a very special place for him. And certainly, University of Guelph, so situated in a town that Grandpa called home all of his life. He raised his family in Guelph as a community and really fell in love with that community because of his start here with, with all of you, with this university. Um, you know, so I know this, this institution specifically was very close to Grandpa's heart. He was very keen on knowing all of you. Um, and, and certainly from the time he was president, into pres you know professor chancellor uh, he was very keen on having and getting to know who was in his institution he used to do something they now call management by walking around um, but he would walk around every day to classes and just meet students and get to know the teachers and the staff and the faculty and that was of huge importance to him uh, and so no surprise ultimately that he would uh, many he was sort of famous for having had uh, first year students to the president's house he was one of the last professors to ever actually live in the president's house here on the campus of Guelph, University of Guelph uh, and you know he would kind of try to get them situated and get to know everyone that would be entering his university uh, and so that was important to him and of course once it came time to name something after him uh, they chose a walkway instead of a building because it was appropriate for his style of management and of leadership the University of Guelph is so important to him uh, in his career and to who he was. And so, you know, for you having this event today, we thank you. Uh, what a lovely thing, what a lovely initiative it is to have such a tribute to him. Of course, we'd like to thank Claire. Alexander uh, in VP External, Office of the VP External. We'd like to thank um, Audrey Jamal in the Office of the President. Of course, President Vaccarino and the choir, who I know he was close to and who was part of this original initiative. And then, of course, to all of you who spoke today and all of you who came. Uh, we'd like to thank you sincerely for having this, for remembering him so fondly, for paying tribute to my grandfather's life. So for that, we thank you. I thank you. Uh, sorry to have missed it, but we are wishing you a wonderful tribute uh, and, and a fantastic event. Thank you. Dr. William C., the Honorable Dr. William C. Weingard's impact on this institution extends far beyond buildings and programs. It was his kindness, generosity, and commitment to improving the lives of others that helped to shape the culture of this university. He was an important role model for us, whether it be accepting leadership positions, running for parliament, reading to children, or mentoring countless individuals. His message throughout his years, regardless of where he was working, was consistent, that we all have a duty. He used that word to me a lot. We all have a duty to making a positive difference in the lives of others. As said at the beginning, Bill, a life well lived and one that will continue to influence well into the future. So we'll be closing with one final song from the choir, and then there will be a reception to follow in the Art Gallery of Guelph. This is an appropriate place for his reception as he helped to lay the foundation for this wonderful community facility. 
Please take time, if you haven't already done so, to sign the book, the condolence book out front. We will also take it to the reception afterwards. And also take some time to look at the artwork done by the students from the William C. Weingard Public School. I know if Bill was still here, that's where you'd find him after this ceremony. Again, thank you for coming. Well, let me take this opportunity to again thank everyone for joining us uh, today. Um, this has been a uh, very special and moving day for all of us uh, here. And uh, what a fantastic opportunity to uh, remember Bill and all the great things that he's done for this university, for this community, and our connection with him. So thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. And we have a, a reception at the, uh, at the art gallery. 
Uh, please, uh, please join us if you can. We'd love to have you there. Thank you very much.